Good morning, guys. It's Pete from MyJewelryBunch.com. Today, I want to do a quick review of the Tag Hour Octavia GMT. I think it's a watch that you guys will admire, and it is uh, desirable amongst collectors of old vintage chronographs. Okay, so let's take a look at the Tag Hauer Octavia GMT. This this watch uh, was produced for a few years. Um, it's a vintage GMT, vintage chronograph. You can see this one uh, gets used every single day. Um, take a look at the crystal. You'll see it's got some imperfections in it over the years. It, it looks like, to me, it's the original crystal on this watch. I believe the gentleman who owns it now received it from his father-in-law, um, either as a, as a uh, hand-me-down or as uh, something he inherited. We have the standard chronograph functions obviously start and stop reset. You have uh, GMT indicator so we show military time here uh, which is cool. This watch uh, used to be a diver's watch I think with the wear on the case as well as the wear on most of the parts. I wouldn't feel safe after you know 30-40 years taking this underwater. The gaskets in this watch uh, are a little odd size, although we can get gaskets to fit. Uh, they'll keep moisture out, but they won't keep uh, you know, water out anymore. It is a very desirable collector's watch. Uh, it's rare to, to see any of these. You can see it's about 16 millimeters thick, uh, which is a nice heavy watch. Very well made. We have the original crown on the watch here. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Get that in focus. So it's nice to see a watch that was well taken care of and has its original parts and it hasn't been butchered with aftermarket parts that we see so often today in the luxury watch market. The dial, original and really not damaged. The glow in the dark hands still work, albeit not as good as it did when they were new. Um, sadly, this particular model has lost the little dot. Uh, the glow-in-the-dark dot that was on the in, on the bezel here. These bezels you can get replacements for aftermarket. They're not as nice as the originals, but you're never going to find an original anymore at this point. And in some cases, we can even change that little dot out. So if the customer did want to have the bezel refurbished, it can be done. It's a heavy watch. Um, no heavier than we see in today's watches. Uh, I produce a line of watches that uses a 7750 movement and it's about the same size. Uh, let's take a look. Case wise diameter we are at 43 millimeters so a little bit larger than the line I'm producing but that's about standard for a watch this size this thickness. This watch is a very complicated watch. I mean, not just to set and run uh, the, the parts in it literally a few hundred parts um, make up this whole movement and uh, this watch came in for service about seven months ago customer uh, never used a stopwatch and for some reason of course we're down here in Florida it's hot it's dry most of the time except in summer uh, sometimes we get a little you know, oil and, and the, the parts that we need to grease they'll get dried up a little bit and we just go through and do them again so I just did a quick uh, service on this just to make sure that everything was lubed up and under normal circumstances uh, 40 45 years of wear you're also going to get some parts that kind of stick every once in a while that you know the springs kind of lose their their tension and uh, parts will often wear down to a point where we can't fix them anymore we have to either make them or find a case that we can butcher parts out of which nobody likes to do either so let's take a look at the inside of this watch. I'm not going to take the band off. I'm just going to open it up real quick. This opened up. Oh, while, I'm, while I'm talking about this, one of the things that uh, has been popular in my store uh, before I closed my retail shop down uh, the crown, if you notice, is on the left side of the case. 
So typically watches are worn on your left wrist. Not always, but 90% of the time, 95% of the time, watches get worn on the left side of the wrist. And you can see one cool thing about that is if, like, uh, if you're like me, you play golf, um, that crown is not going to dig into the palm of my hand when I swing the club. So, you know, it's just a popular thing down here that I've had luck with a lot of golfers. I sell uh, the Citizen line of watches and they have a, a golf version with the crown on the left side so that your wrist doesn't hit that crown every time and leave a bad indentation in the, the top of your hand and after about uh, seven eight holes that often hurts so golfers either don't wear watches or wear comfortable watches. Let's take a look at the movement. We can see uh, let's focus in on this movement. You can see it's a pretty complicated watch movement. I'm going to flip this over here so we can see it. From here we've got the uh, start stop button here. If I start it, stop it, and you can see the movement. I'm going to get a good image of that. And see by starting it we're, we're turning the center wheel there which allows the chrono hand to go by. And I can stop that and then hit the reset button. And you can see now that everything's been re-lubed, everything is uh, working good again, which is nice. Uh, sometimes with these watches, uh, at this point in time, 30, 40, 50 year old chronographs you'll see from Bright Lean or Tag, what we'll run into is the occasional wear on some of the sliders. And these have to be either greased with a good watch grease or oiled with a, uh, an oil that doesn't dry out very often. So you want to look for the best oils and greases that you can. I'll try to put a link in the video below if you guys are interested. But if you look at each of these plates, uh, literally you have a dozen parts under most of these plates and as we get down in layers, I'd say overall I, I've taken this watch apart. I didn't count all the pieces that were in it, but I'm going to say around 220, 227 uh, between the screws, the springs, the plates, the la latches and levers. So not only do you have to deal with you know watch functions, but you also have to deal with a very complex system of chronograph. And that is one of the reasons that this watch tends to be so desirable. The other reason this watch is so desirable is that it's pretty reliable and it keeps very good time. An older style that uh, you know, I guess uh, it, it could have used some improvement, but it works, and we like things that work. So, you know, take a look at that, and you know, just remember that as complicated as this is, with all the articulations and complications, the watch works great. All these pieces here, over time, the the, the initial reason this watch came in is because it was water damaged. There was uh, about a dozen or so parts that were rusty and uh, parts for these watches are very difficult to find, which makes this watch very valuable. If you can find this watch in running condition, um, about the only piece that I know I can change on this every single time would be the mainspring. I can get a mainspring for this watch at any time. There's enough of them out there. Plus there's enough aftermarket uh, ETA springs that'll work with this also. But most of these articulated pieces, if one breaks or gets damaged due to rust or corrosion, uh, we may never be able to find a replacement part. There are some available, but rare. Uh, most of the parts that I see today uh, you know, on the auction sites, uh, they're damaged in some way. They came out of a watch that was corroded or rusted to begin with. So you really have to be conscious of that when, re when buying a part like that for a watch that's no longer uh, in production. For, for so long. <clears throat> Originally these buttons here had uh, heavy seals on them so they were watertight as well as the crown. Um, with the wear on the original crown, the customer does not want to replace it with a generic crown, which I don't blame him. Uh, there's just no way to completely make this, this case watertight. We can replace the gasket on the back case. I can replace the gaskets on the buttons, but the crown itself um, without doing some major modifications, we're just never going to uh, be able to water seal this watch. So just keep that in mind with, uh, with an Octavia if you find one. It has a beautiful, well-made screw-down back and you can tell quality. If you can 
screw down the back with your fingers and not hear any grinding, any, any wear whatsoever. That's a good case back, and this case was manufactured very, very well. I'm just going to tighten this up real quick here. So again, um, this watch, being as vintage as it is, uh, we have an aftermarket band. You can still get replica bands of the original version. Uh, I've seen them on the auction sites and I've seen them from some suppliers, but uh, for the most part, if, if you do have one and you want to keep it authentic, I would either put a diver's or a very nice stainless steel version on it. Something that, uh, you know, not, don't cheap out on, it, on a band. You can get bands that fit pretty well. You can see there's some gaps here, obviously an aftermarket, but uh, it works. It's not perfect, but it does the job. Wearing this watch is very comfortable. It fits on average wrist very well. There is no digging or poking into the wrist. You can see the lugs here. If we look at the lugs, they're elevated far above the case back. So that case back keeps the watch case and frame elevated above the wrist so that you don't get poked by these sharp edges on the lugs, which is very nice. I, I, when I designed my watch cases for my line of watches, uh, I did the same thing we kept the lugs above the wrist so that there's no poking or prodding into the wrist because you don't want to wear a watch that pinches you and that is an occasional problem especially as we get into smaller chronographs that are very complicated. So guys that's my review of this watch. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful item to have in your collection. I believe these watches are going between $6,500 and $9,500 depending on the condition. So Keep that in mind if you're looking for one. You will pay the price to have a watch as beautiful as this in your collection. Um, my suggestion to the customer last year when he brought it in for service was to at least replace the crystal. We can put a nice sapphire uh, two millimeter crystal in here that would eliminate the bubbles and uh, if you look closely you'll see some bubbles in that crystal. Um, it's just happened over time. That was just the manufacturing, you know, over time these things wear down. UV gets into them and they get little chips and holes and pits. So uh, I believe this guy's father-in-law wore this watch about every single day and he took good care of it and it shows. Hope you enjoyed this review guys. If you did give it a thumbs up, share it. Uh, every time you share a video of mine it gets uh, higher ratings on YouTube and I appreciate all the views I can get. Helps with my subscriber base. And if you like the video, thumbs up. If you want to see more and you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to get an alert every time I upload a new video, which usually is weekly or, or bi-weekly, uh, I've taken a little time off lately to deal with some family issues, but uh, normally I upload at least one video a week. I've been absent for a couple weeks here. I saw, sorry about that. Um, hit the little notification bell, and every time I upload something, you will get a little alert on your YouTube app. Thanks, guys. Have a good day, and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.